A blessed morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We lovingly welcome you all to the seventh day of our novena to Our Lady of Mount Carmel with the theme, My God, what a joy is your presence within me, that intimate sanctuary of my soul where I can always find you. For this morning's celebration, we have the following sponsors of attendance. Friends of St. Therese, Servants of the Lord, Servants Communities, Confradia del Santo Nino de Cebu, The Catholic Charismatic Renewal, and Bilbao's Cansi House. Let us now rise and welcome our Lord Jesus Christ in the person of his minister, Reverend Father Hubert Haviliana. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what, in what I, I have, have done, done in and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, you willed that the Order of Carmel should be named in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son. Through her prayers, as we honor her today, bring us to everlasting joy in her company. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne with a train of his garment filling the temple. Seraphim were stationed above. Each of them had six wings. With two, they veiled their faces. With two, they veiled their feet. And with two, they hovered aloft. They cried to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, I am doomed. For I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember that he had taken with tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, your sin purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
please all rise. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the Spirit of God rests upon you. be with you and with your spirit our reading from the holy gospel according to matthew glory to you o lord jesus said to his disciples no disciple is above his teacher no slave above his master it is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher for the slave that he become like his master if they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more those of his household? Therefore, do not be afraid of them. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in darkness, speak in the light. <coughs> what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? And yet, not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge even all the hairs of your hair are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Sisters of Carmel, Reverend Sisters of the various religious congregations, brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather today on the seventh day of our preparation for the feast of our Blessed Mother, the Lady of Carmel, we are guided by one of the saints of Carmel in this reflection, in the person of Saint Elizabeth of the Trinity. And she says, My God, what a joy is your presence within me, that intimate sanctuary of my soul where I can always find you. Question, how do you find prayer? How do we find prayer every day of our lives. Is it a feeling of which I am just compelled because it is a must? Or whether, whether lang ah, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Second question, have you ever experienced spiritual dryness in your prayer life? And what have you done? A number of religious men and women who have been turned to become some of my friends, have told me, Father, there are a number of times that my prayer life becomes so dry. I don't like to pray, but I need to pray. And I could not feel the presence of the Lord. What about the lay people? Did you ever have that experience in your prayer life? These two big questions are questions that would lead us to understand Pope Francis' theme for this year, 
as we celebrate this year, the year of prayer, and as we prepare for the ordinary jubilee this coming, starting December 28, or rather starting December 8 this year until next year. The Holy Father had led us on this year to reflect the theme, teach us how to pray. This is not the words of the Holy Father, but this was then the words of the apostles when they asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. Why? Don't the apostles know how to pray? They knew. They have their own way of praying, but they would like to act to they would like Jesus to teach them what is the best way of praying. And indeed, they were taught by Jesus. And the best prayer is the Lord's Prayer itself. And we Catholics mumble our Father, our Father, our Father. What does it mean to call God our Father? And of course, added to that are our praises to Him. And the last of those are set of supplications. Nevertheless, that prayer, the Lord's Prayer itself, teaches us to place ourselves in the presence of God. When Jesus taught them how to pray, I believe the very first act Jesus had taught them is not only the words, Our Father, but be aware of the presence of God. And that's why in most Catholic schools, they would always begin their prayer, let us put ourselves in the holy presence of God. And that is already itself a prayer, recognizing that we are in the presence of God and God is in our midst. And what a great joy is it for us to recognize that. But if it's just a mumbling of the mouth, no? just mere voice and sounds and words, with no understanding that indeed God is in our midst, then prayer becomes routinary. Like the recitation of the Holy Rosary, the Rosary is not intended to be prayed as if the train is behind us. We might be hit by the train. Hail Mary, full of grace, Holy Mary, Mother of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, Holy Mary, Mother of God. What are we running after? Or what, who runs after us? We know that Hail, the Rosary is a beautiful prayer of contemplation as we reflect on the lives of Jesus with the Blessed Mother. And if Jesus is with us together with the Blessed Mother, what joy will we have in praying? The problem by now, because of gadgets, of technology, of yes, the gadgets, the technology, and the demands of the time, which we make it a problem when it is not a problem. Let us to make our prayer as if when we are in school, just for compliance purposes. No more joy of encountering the beloved. Saint Elizabeth of the Trinity, the moment she received her first communion, she said, I have Jesus in me and I don't want to be departed from him. Uh, paraphrasing her words. But her point is, now that she has Jesus in her, Jesus is everything for her. And surely, of course at the time, she wasn't able to meet yet the Holy Mother, Teresa of Avila. Because she was just a little girl. Although their house is just close to one of the convents of Carmel. And yet, that was already her spiritual experience of the Lord. Now that she had Jesus in her in communion, what great joy was it for her. And she doesn't want to abandon Jesus, nor a Jesus to abandon herself. Only when we will have this experience and realization, when prayer then becomes no longer a routine, but it's an opportunity to be with Him. And if it is an opportunity, siguro dapat daw artista nga nag-abot. 
whereby we will really spend time with that artista. My nephew asked me, nga pwede siya makatanaw bala concert sang isa ka Korean pop nga idol-idol yagin. To pila ang bili. Siling niya 3,500. Ara ka ginato sa atubangan? Sige, hindi. Ato ko sa punta-punta. Hindi na to magpahimunong ka. You're wasting your time. You will be wasting your money. And good enough, he listened. That's the same thing in prayer. When we know the one we will be meeting with is a very significant person, we will not find, we will not look at time as if kabud kadugay. But rather, an hour with the Lord would tell us, kulang pa. It is not yet enough. But the problem of today is, it's fine. I'm done with my rosary. And that is it. I'm done with my liturgy of the hour. That's it. What other prayers do you have? Your novenas. That's it. I've been telling always my parishioners that that is not yet what prayer is all about. That is what you proclaim. That is a declamation. That is an oratorical presentation for the judges to evaluate you. We have to remember what prayer is according to our catechism. It is a conversation of God to man and man to God. The problem is God becomes passive listener and we become active speakers. When God wanted to become an active speaker, we are already gone from the presence of the Lord. Why? Because after praying all our devotions, devotionals, we end it in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And we say goodbye. Don't we want God to talk to us? If we do, can't we spend minutes on an hour of prayer in silence? Nothing. No? In the words of St. Teresa of Avila, nada. Nothing. But simply be consumed by the presence of God. Can we do that? And I believe that could be an opportunity for us. No? That could be an opportunity for us to truly deepen our prayer life. When Jesus taught them how to pray the Our Father, Jesus kept on explaining who is the Father. And in fact, they were asking, show us the Father and that would be enough. And yet Jesus said, haven't you seen the Father? I've been I have been talking about him long time ago with you, and yet you haven't seen him? If you see me, then you see the Father in me. Brothers and sisters, that's the fruit of prayer. When we are in the state of prayer, it's not that we get the virtue of patience alone, but we gain Jesus in us. And that, I believe, is what is meant by Saint Edith or Saint Elizabeth. My God, what a joy is your presence within me, that intimate sanctuary of my soul where I can always find you. Jesus does not stay in the church. He is neither in your altars. Jesus is in our hearts. Only that we need to recognize every moment of the day that He is with us. The second question is, have you experienced spiritual dryness? Father Thomas Green, a Jesuit of the late, uh, the late Father Thomas Green, he has a book entitled, When the Well Gets Dry. From that book, he wrote consul words of consolation for those who thought that they are no longer in the state of prayer, who thought that their prayer life is no longer heard and recognized by God. Thomas Green said that when you feel spiritual dryness, do not abandon prayer life. Do not abandon your prayer life. When your prayer seems to have no more taste at all, and it as if it is just for religious and for us priests, as if it is 
a prescription that we need to do, but it has no meaning at all. He said, keep pushing yourself in prayer. The well gets dry, but the water is still beneath it. As if during the great drought that we experienced during the El Nino, some wells, some rivers get dry. But the truth is, it's the surface that gets dry. But deep, dig deeper and you will realize there's still the water spring or the springs of water. And that is it also in prayer life. It, we get, prayer life becomes dry because it's our action. Allow then God to do something in our prayer life. Then and only then, we will realize that the well is not dry. Or probably try other forms of prayer. When we were having our psycho-spiritual formation year, or yes, SPSY, spiritual pastoral formation year, one of the modules that were taught to us is prayer forms, anchored with different temperaments. Not all of us will have one and common prayer styles. It all depends on one's temperament. But it doesn't lock us. Say, for example, uh, I am an SJ, sensing judging, and therefore my way of prayer is questioning always God. I always would make my prayer with so many questions. Example only, huh? While the NI or NT, I think, no, no, intuitive thinking, intuitive, I, 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 something like that. The intuitive and the sensing, theirs is, they would just look, stare on dry leaves falling down, and for them, they could feel a lot of presence of God. There's that close encounter because their model is St. Francis. When they pray, St. Francis could see God in the nature and they would do that. So when we were introduced to this, the purpose was when we feel dry in one form of prayer, then we allow to venture into other prayer forms. But the point is never abandon prayer. No? Never abandon prayer every day. That was the recommendation for us and I believe the same recommendation I need to give to all of you. When you feel kapoy ka na, kay kadamo sang ubra, gasakit na ang ulo mo, still pray. Because St. Augustine said, a man without prayer is like a tree without roots. But this we will only realize when we get dry. No? When we get dry. But remember, it's not dry. Jesus is in our midst. The only thing is, let us seek Him. As He said, seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Ask and you will receive. May then Saint Elizabeth of the Trinity intercede for us to grow in that spiritual life where she, in her early age, had experienced. She said she idolized so much Saint Therese because of the great love of Saint Therese for Jesus. And she wanted to be like Therese. Indeed, she turned to be. Therese died at the age of 24. Elizabeth died at the age of 26. She stayed only in Carmel for five years, for she entered the Carmel at the age of 21. But it was not in Carmel that she met Jesus. She met Jesus even outside of Carmel. I'm telling this to you that don't worry if you don't turn to become like our sisters here in Carmel, that you are confined in the four walls. You could still experience Jesus outside the walls of Carmel, for Jesus do not stay in Carmel. As St. Elizabeth says, she is in her, therefore Jesus is in you.
please all rise. Let us ask the Lord's protection through our devotion to Our Lady of Mount Carmel and on wearing her brown scapular. With confidence we pray, through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, bless your people. Through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, bless your people. Pour out over your church, Lord, the joy and strength of the Holy Spirit and by the prayers of our Blessed Mother, protect and make it holy as she proclaims the good news to all peoples in union with Pope Francis, all bishops and the clergy, the religious and the faithful, we pray. Through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, bless your people. May our devotion to Our Lady of Mount Carmel on this year dedicated to the prayer by Pope Francis, bring us together as one nation on our knees begging God's mercy on the issues of West Philippine Sea, Roe, and the divorce bill, we pray. Through the intercession, the intercession of, of the, the Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mary bless, bless your people. May the brown scapular we wear bring us and our families closer to God through prayer and godly ways worthy as her beloved children, we pray. Through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, bless your people. Grant divine wisdom, O Lord, to those who govern our country and world leaders. Grant peace, we plead, O Lord, to the world and the end, an end to the senseless destruction of lives and nations, we pray. Through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, bless your people. Bless the Order of Carmel, our Father General Miguel Calle, OCD, as his intentions, the friars and the nuns, the secular Carmelites, and those affiliated to the Order, we pray. Through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, bless your people. For those who suffer, the sick, the homeless, and find life burdensome. May our Blessed Mother show herself a mother to them, we pray. Through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, bless your people. May our beloved departed, whom you have redeemed with your blood, rest in eternal peace, we pray. Through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, bless your people. In the silence of our hearts, we pray for the intentions of this Mass and our personal concerns, we pray. Through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, bless your people. Lord God, through the intercession of the glorious Virgin Mary, come to our aid that we may reach the holy mountain, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen.
please all rise. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my and your sacrifice be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Lord, we reverently offer you these gifts in memory of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. In your service, may our love become like hers and so unite us more closely with the work of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, Father all-powerful and ever-living God. We do well and always and everywhere to give you thanks. As we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Carmel, your word filled her heart and inspired all her actions, making her constant in prayer with the apostles, and through her share in our salvation, constituting her the spiritual mother of all mankind. She watches unceasingly with a mother's loving care over the brethren of her son, and lights us along our pilgrim way to the mount of your glory, our beacon of comfort, and the embodiment of all our hopes as members of the church. Now, with all the saints and angels, we praise you as we acclaim. are indeed, O your Lord, the font of all holiness. Let your Spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of a new and everlasting covenant will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis our Pope, Patricia our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Sebastian, Lorenzo Ruiz, Pedro Palungso, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we pray. Give us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we await in joyful hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lived and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. And happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
please all rise. Let us pray. Lord, you have strengthened us with food from heaven. May the remembrance of Our Lady of Mount Carmel always bring us happiness and peace in the knowledge of her protection and help us to become what you want us to be. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Novena Prayer. To Our Lady of Mount Carmel. O Mary, Queen, Queen and, and Mother, Mother of Carmel, Carmel we, we come, come today to consecrate ourselves to you. For our whole life is but, is but a small return of the blessings that have come to us through your hands. Your hands. The, greatest the greatest blessings we have experienced is friendship with Jesus, your Son, through prayer. prayer. Source of our strength, light, light in our, our darkness, darkness Consolation when afflicted, peace in our hearts. These are blessings unquantified we receive from prayer. On this year dedicated to prayer, Pope Francis asked us to be renewed and be reconnected to God in this intimate friendship with Him. We lift up to you, your human, our human family. We ask you, Take, Take us by, by the hand of God's throne of mercy. Many, many distractions, distractions, secular influence, influence difficulties, difficulties in life, losing moral values, keep, keep us away from God, God and we become, we become lost and confused. confused. Yet, Yet down, down deep, deep inside our hearts, hearts that long for peace, peace to a coming, coming home, home to God, to God where our hearts find rest. rest. The scapular we wear is a sign of your constant protection. Drive from our path any force of evil and restore our desire for good, charity to all, forgiveness and compassion. Melt our selfishness to reach out in love and service to one another, that we may truly be your children, one in desire with you, to seek God's will, and do what pleases Him most. With you, praying with us, all will be possible. We thank you, our beloved Mother of Carmel, as we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We shall now sing the hymn, Mary, we greet thee.
kindly be seated for a while. It is a great experience to come together on this day, Saturday, a day of our Blessed Mother. She manifests her maternal presence in the quiet of our hearts, and she draws us to an intimate friendship with Jesus, her Son. Thank you for your presence and participation. As she gathers us as her children, our special thanks to our celebrant and homilist, Reverend Father Hubert Habiliana, for our meaningful morning liturgy. Our Eucharistic ministers, the readers and operators, the documentation team, and altar servers continue with their service of love. We also thank the lay organizations and sponsors of attendance for their presence and support. Our Carmel Sunday Choir continue to accompany our celebrations with their lovely hymns offered to our Blessed Mother, and we give them all a round of applause. <clears throat> These last three days are Chiduum days, which will prepare our hearts as we come closer to the feast of our Blessed Mother. We hope you can continue to join us and be with, uh, be with us as a family that offers our praise and thanksgiving to her. Each of us has a personal experience of her motherly care and presence in our life's journey, and we come just to thank her and ask of her the grace to be constant in prayer like her and do what pleases God most. Thank you once again, as we wish you a blessed weekend and happy moments with your families. May God bless us all. We shall now have the blessing of the scapulars. Please all rise. The person who is to receive the habit kneels and the priest vested in sir, please. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Savior of mankind, by your right hand, sanctify this scapular, which your servant will devoutly wear for the love of you and of your mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mount Carmel. By your intercession, may they be protected from the wickedness of the enemy and persevere in your grace until death. You who lived and reigned forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessed, the blessed scapular and ask the Most Holy Virgin that by her merits it may be worn with you stained of sin. It may be worn with no stain of sin and may protect you from all harm and bring you everlasting life. Amen. Before I give the final blessing, I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you every second Saturday at 8 a.m. except for this Saturday for a triduo or rather a votive mass in honor of St. Therese. Our diocese has only one parish dedicated to St. Therese and that is in our parish. It is located at Camiroli Avenue, Barangay 35, Bacolod City. Going to uh, Gaisano City, you will have there the Lichunan country. Prior to the Lichunan, you will have Bongbongs. From here, from the north, going to the south, turn to your right, go straight ahead, and the last na, na kalidera, turn right, and you will have there the church in honor of St. Therese. 
but I'd like also to take this opportunity to make an appeal for support. We are constructing a church in honor of St. Therese. This was started sometime in 2000, 2020 on the height of pandemic. It stopped for a while and just last January, we continued the construction. The existing church that we have can only accommodate 120 uh, churchgoers. And we are improving it to accommodate 500 or more. It has a two, it's a two-story church. By now, it's almost done, but the funds is almost gone. Uh, two weeks ago, I notified my parishioners the construction will come to an end the next week of that. Because what was the remaining cement that we have is only 27 bags. Good enough, my parishioners, the parishioners of St. Therese Quasi Parish, have the love for St. Therese. And on that very week also, we received around 170 bags of cement. I visited one friend and I told her my difficulty because the fund is only 80,000. We now have the roof. What is left are the windows and the pasting of the walls. It's really almost done. And I told her, I might stop the construction. And she told me, don't stop, Father, the construction. I am giving you this amount. Again, how much is your remaining fund? And I told her, 80,000. Father, I will change this. I will be give you a bigger amount, but don't stop the construction. Yes, we did not stop the construction because we will give this as a gift to St. Therese next year. When we will celebrate the 100th year, she will be turning 100th year next year. So our church is the only church dedicated to St. Therese in the whole island of Negros Occidental and Negros Oriental, or the Negros Island. I haven't heard anyone in the Diocese of Dumaguete. Cabangkalan has for the seminary, San Carlos doesn't have. St. Therese would like to be known, not because of who she is, that by her teaching, we will know God and fall in love with God. I appeal if you could be of support for the completion of the construction of this church in honor of St. Therese. We need materials. We need also cash. After which, uh, cement keeps on coming. By now, the other day, around, the other day, around 50 sacks of cement were also uh, donated. But those are not enough. Those cements are not enough because mas budlay na gali ang finishing ka graphing. No? Kay gapatapos ka na. So, I appeal for your help. If there is any, you can direct it to our parish or Sister Grace and Mother May, basi pwede through you to Carmel that their donation could be uh, through channel for the St. Therese Quasi Parish. Again, thank you very much. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. We go in peace. Thanks be to God.